Okay, so this is our third or fourth, maybe fourth video on cellular respiration. And in this one, we'll be focusing on the last step of aerobic respiration, which includes the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis uh, for oxidative phosphorylation. So let's go ahead and zoom in. So what I'm zooming into is when we look at um, this here, this inner membrane, that is the location that we will be seeing right here um, in our um, video. Okay, so uh, this part is the matrix on the inside, uh, that light beige area, and then the orange is the intermembrane space or the space between the two membranes. So along the, or located within the inner membrane is the electron transport chain or a series of enzymes. Now these are proteins and um, one thing I wanted to point out is that um, there'll be certain units where you'll come across, um, like in unit seven on evolution, sometimes they talk about comparing cytochrome C proteins. Well, cytochrome C is one of those proteins. I, these, I'm just like one of these proteins within the electron transport chain is cytochrome C. Um, it's super critically important for um, life. All right. So uh, in our previous videos, we saw in glycolysis, the oxidation of pyruvate, as well as um, the citric acid cycle, how in each of those metabolic pathways, we had electron carriers become reduced. And these electron carriers, their main purpose is to carry the electrons over to the electron transport chain. So while we oxidized our food in the first couple steps, um, we are uh, now going to oxidize these electron carriers. So at the beginning of the electron trap, oh, let's not forget about oxygen. So we call this aerobic respiration because it requires oxygen. Now oxygen is very electronegative and pulls or and attracts those electrons and pulls them down the ETC. Okay, it's a final electron acceptor. So if we are oxidizing our electron carriers, that means something needs to get reduced. And if oxygen is the final electron acceptor, that means it's the one gaining those electrons. And so therefore oxygen becomes reduced. And as it gains those electrons, it's also gonna gain hydrogen, which forms water. Okay, so uh, here we're gonna oxidize our electron carriers. And what you notice is that the um, oxygen pulls those electrons down the electron transport chain while pumping that proton into the inter, um, inner intermembrane space. So a cool thing about this is that that NAD plus can now be reused again in glycolysis, the oxidation of pyruvate or the Krebs cycle. We've basically recycled it or regenerated it. Okay, so um, when we look at this electron transport chain, the electron carriers get oxidized at the beginning of the electron transport chain and their electrons are pulled down by that very electronegative oxygen. Now, um, again, you can see these electron carriers are oxidized while the oxygen is becoming reduced. Now, over time, we get a proton gradient um, built up in this inter membrane or inner membrane space. Now it's important to remember that this is a lipid bilayer as well as the outer membrane. These positively charged protons cannot just diffuse out. Um, that positive charge prevents them from going through that lipid bilayer's nonpolar core, the nonpolar center of that lipid bilayer. So here we have a proton gradient has been established. And if you really think about this proton gradient, like how did we establish this, right? Like what role did the electron carriers play? Well, when the electron carriers were oxidized, that means they donated electrons into the electron transport chain. And as they were passed down the ETC with oxygen being very electronegative, pulling them and attracting them and gaining those final electrons, 
each time the electron is passed from one enzyme to the next, a little bit of energy is used to pump them into that space, establishing that proton gradient. So when we think about um, this, it's not totally active transport, but it does require a little bit of energy that's given up in the passing of each electron because you're pumping positively charged ions to where there's already positively charged ions. So it's like you're pushing them where they wouldn't want to go naturally, right? Um, so let's go ahead and um, see what's up. So uh, with this proton gradient that becomes established, I also want to point out that in this area, you're going to have a lower pH relative to the matrix because all of that, um, all of those protons, a high concentration of protons creates a more acidic environment. Sometimes that comes into play in different contexts of questions or experiments or something. Okay, so now that we've established this proton gradient though, we have this rad enzyme called ATP synthase. And the ATP synthase is like a turnstile and it actually like turns and phosphorylates ADP and inorganic phosphate into ATP. So as the protons flow through ATP synthase, it turns and does phosphorylation, producing ATP. So this is um, like a type of facilitated diffusion almost where it flows through ATP synthase, turning ATP synthase to make ATP. Now the hydrogen ions that flow through ATP synthase back into the matrix are attracted to that really electronegative oxygen that's also gained negatively charged electrons. And now you have um, the hydrogens being attracted to form water. So when we look at that overall reaction of cellular respiration, how water is an end product, this is where water comes from um, in cellular respiration. So this continues to happen producing ATP. Okay, and water. So when we look at um, our process of what we learned here, we basically have two parts. Our first part was the electron transport chain that established the proton gradient. And our second part was this. We call the diffusion of ions down their electrochemical gradient chemiosmosis. So um, when we look at uh, this process, so chemiosmosis is what turns ATP synthase. Um, and ATP synthase uh, makes or phosphorylates ADP with an inorganic phosphate. Um, and that process is not substrate level phosphorylation, but rather um, oxidative phosphorylation. So uh, you can remember it in one of two ways, I guess. Um, you can either think about we had to oxidize the electron carrier in order to establish that proton gradient that allowed for chemiosmosis, or you can think we oxidized our food to get those electron carriers to create that proton gradient and allow for chemiosmosis and oxidative phosphorylation. Now, if at any point you don't have oxygen, this cannot happen. So when a person or an animal or an organism dies from suffocation, that's because there was no oxygen to pull the electrons down the ETC and glycolysis just wasn't enough to produce didn't produce enough ATP in order to have that organism survive. Um, and uh, yeah, if uh, there's certain toxins like cyanide also is an inhibitor to one of the enzymes here in the electron transport chain. So uh, cyanide is actually toxic because it is a, shoot, I think it's a non-competitive inhibitor that will block one of these enzymes um, shutting down the ETC. And if there's no proton gradient, then there's no chemiosmosis and there's no ATP produced. And then the cell, you can't survive. Okay, so when we look at um, this last step of uh, aerobic respiration, it's made of both the electron transport chain as well as chemiosmosis. And together, those are called oxidative phosphorylation. And it produces, oh, I'm sorry, um, the majority of um, the ATP that we use. All right, so uh, that is it on aerobic respiration and
my next uh, video will be on fermentation and anaerobic respiration. Good job, guys.